Dear viewers, welcome to the YouTube channel Let's Turbo Chemistry. In this video, we are going to learn the extraction of copper, otherwise extractive metallurgy of copper. So let us learn the basics now. Copper, we usually call cuprum. The name actually comes from the Latin name Cybrum, Cybrum, which itself comes from Hebrews. This is a Greek name of Cyprus. In the ancient time, the copper metal was largely found in the island of Cyprus. That's why it is mainly called as Cybrum, which then simplified into Cuprum. So this is how the name has come. The next is availability in the crystal. The copper is a moderate reactive metal which is found in the lower part of the reactivity series. Hence, it has occurred in the native and combined state. Which is a chief ore of copper? The chief ore of copper is called copper pyrite or chalcopyrite. The formula is CEFES2. So, this is a chief ore of copper. The other important ores are chalcosite, CE2S. Cuprite or ruby copper, CE2O, etc. Now, the copper pyrite is mainly provides 76% of the demand of copper. So, which is a chief ore of copper, the answer is copper pyrite. The formula is CEF2. Now, let us uh, see the extraction processes, important extraction processes. The first process is concentration of ore, second process is roasting, third is melting, fourth one is bezomerization, fifth one is refining. Now we will see what is the overview of each process. The, con the crushed ore is concentrated by fourth rotation method. The concentrated ore is heated with excess of oxygen to get matte in the smelting process. In this process, we add a coke and sand. The sand is used as a flaxia, so which combines with the matrix or impurity to make slag. The coke provides the temperature, right? So to burn this, bismarization is a process of changing the mat into blister copper in the bismar converter. The last one, the blister copper has some impurities which will be purified by the electrolytic refining. This process is called refining process. The next overview is the copper pyrite ore is crushed and concentrated by fourth rotation, roasted to get matte. The matte is heated in the blast furnace along with coke and sand, then converted into blister copper and slag. And then this blister copper is purified with the electrolytic refining process to get pure metal. So this is how the overview of the process we can understand. Let us see the uh, each process in detail. First, concentration of the ore. We know that CFES2, which is a sulfide ore. So copper pyrite is a sulfide ore. So usually sulfide ores are concentrated by fourth rotation method. So this is a method we have already learned. So in this process it is concentrated so that we use pine oil, water. The ore is wetted by pine oil and it will be uh, come as a bubbles to the top by applying the compressed air. The Ore containing fourth are collected in separate, separate tank and then processed to get the copper pyrite ore separate. This is how the concentration process done. The next is roasting of concentrated ore in the reverberatory furnace. So this is called reverberatory furnace. The concentrated ore is allowed to fall on the reverberatory furnace in this. The air oxygen is passed along with this heating. So, with the excess of air it is heated. So, we know very well that when you heat any substance at 100 degree, more than 100 degree, the 
moisture will evaporate. Similarly, other, other volatile impurities, easily evaporatable impurities. So during this process, the moisture and volatile impurities are evaporated or removed. The other impurities such as sulfur, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony are removed as they are respective oxides. You can see the arsenic combines with oxygen to form arsenic oxide. Antimony combines with oxygen to form antimony oxide. Then sulfur, sulfur dioxide, phosphorus, phosphorus pentoxide. So likewise all the impurities will be evaporated as a gas, as a vapor. So the remaining part is copper pyrite. The copper pyrite, because of oxygen, it combines with the sulfur to form sulfur dioxide. And then this copper pyrite is partially broken or converted into copper 1 sulfide and iron 2 sulfide. So this is how the process takes place. So the copper pyrite is partially converted into sulfides of copper and iron. So this is process is called roasting process. The next process is smelting. In this coke and sand is added in the blast furnace. So this is how the blast furnace looks like. Is added. The sand is used as a fluxium. So which combines with the impurity. The impurity is nothing but FES. Combines with it to form a slag. And then copper sulfide is partially separated. Now when you heat this, we get a two mixtures, two Compound is a mixture. The roasted oil mixed with the powder coke and sand is heated in a blast furnace to obtain matte. What is a matte? Copper 1 sulfide plus iron 2 sulfide. This mixture is called matte. And then a slag is nothing but sand combined with FES to form silicate, iron silicate, which is used as a slag, which will be collected separately and the mud. Mat is treated for the next process. So this process is called smelting. The next process is bessemerization. So this apparatus is called bessemer converter. We have a tuus, tuus which is used for blowing the hot air inside the bessemer converter. So in this hot air is passed and then fine sand is taken. Right? So, the two substances in the mat, the molten mat, is taken in the bismuth converter. So, the mat is made up of ferrous sulphide, which is oxidized to ferrous oxide. Right? So, now the ferrous oxide, FeO, combines with the sand, silicon dioxide, to form a slag which is nothing but iron silicate. You could see here, the FeS oxidized combines with oxygen to form FeO, ferrous oxide. The sulfur again combines with it to form SO2. So you could see the SO2 gas which is coming out of the specimen converter. The FeO combines with the sand to form a silicate, iron silicate, which is removed as a slag at the bottom. Now, the remaining part, copper sulfide from mat, is oxidized to copper oxide, which is oxidized to copper oxide. Sulfur dioxide gases evolve during this process continuously. The converted copper oxide combines with copper sulfide and then gets reduced to copper and then sulfur dioxide gases evolve. So this is the equation you could see. The copper sulfide oxidized to copper oxide copper 1 oxide along with sulfur dioxide gas. Now the copper oxide combines with the copper sulfide to form copper and sulfur dioxide. This happens in the uh, bismuth converter. The final copper is called blister copper. Why? The sulfur dioxide gas is complete, continuously coming through this copper which is in the molten state. So the copper has a holes in it. So the copper has a holes in it. That's why it is called blister copper. It looks like a blister. That's the reason it's called blister copper. So due to sulfur dioxide gas bubble. The next process is so where you get a blister copper, 
the blister copper is, has impurities. You could see the blister copper is 98% copper and 2% impurities. So we have to remove this 2% impurity to get the 100% copper. This process is carried out electrolytically. We call it as electrolytic refining. This is the last process in the copper extraction. You could see here the blister copper is taken as an anode, impure copper. The pure copper rod is taken as a cathode in the electrolytic tank. The electrolytic tank is filled with the electrolyte, which is nothing but copper sulfate plus sulfuric acid. A mixture of copper sulfate and sulfuric acid, otherwise called acidified copper sulfate solution, which acts as an electrolyte. Now, this which is connected to a battery, so when you supply the electric current, in the solution we have a copper 2 plus ion because copper sulfate is CuSO4. So in the solution, Cu2 plus and SO4 2 minus will be there. So once if you supply electricity to these electrodes, it is negative. So it is a anode is positive, this is cathode, negative. The copper present in the solution moves throughout the cathode. You could see here because copper is positive, cathode is negative. Most of the copper in the solution goes and attach and gains electron and deposit in the cathode. Right? Now the solution does not have any copper. The sulfate ions are negatively charged, will move towards the anode. Now the sulfate and copper will combine to form copper sulfate. So when the copper sulfate forms in the solution it will again ionize into copper 2 plus and SO4 2 minus. Again the copper will move to the cathode and deposit it. See so like this when the copper keep on goes and settle down at the cathode like this. You could see the size of the anode keep on reduces. You could see the size at finally. Now the impurities are not attracted by the sulphate ions. It will be obviously settled down at the bottom of the uh, anode. Such an impurity we call anode mud. So this anode mud actually contains a very valuable metals, a very small amount of valuable metals like coal, silver. So which they will process again to get the valuable metals back. So this is how the copper, impure copper is treated and refined into pure copper at the cathode. The cathode is taken back and freshly the blister copper is added in the electrolytic tank. This process is repeated to get a pure copper. So this is how the copper is purified in the purified in the electrolytic process. Now let us see the overall process of copper extraction again the copper pyrite ore is crushed and then concentrated by fourth flotation method and then roasted with the in the reverberatory furnace with the excess of oxygen to get matte which is a mixture of copper sulfide and iron sulfide which is uh, undergo a smelting and bismarization process along with the coke and uh, sand we get a lot of uh, oxygen in this so that the iron sulfide is converted into iron oxide. The iron oxide again combines with silica sand to form iron silicate which is nothing but a slab. So this sand removes, removes the impurity so which is a slab. So which is a flux. So flux plus gang or impurity we get slag and then the copper sulphide partially uh, is oxidized actually oxidized into copper oxide and then the copper oxide and the copper sulphide combines to form copper and sulphur dioxide gases released out. Now the sulphur dioxide because of the sulphur dioxide gas comes out this copper, molten copper has a holes. That's why it is called blister copper. This blister copper is further treated 
to the electrolysis process because it has impurities for about 2%. To remove that, we treat in the process called electrolysis. The cathode, anode, we take electrolytic electrolytes like copper sulfate plus sulfuric acid. If you treat it, the pure copper metal is deposited at the cathode. So this is how the copper extraction is done. I hope this video will be very helpful in learning the extraction of copper. If you have any doubt, we can command in the command session. Let me clarify. If you like this video, subscribe and click the bell button to get a notification instantly. Share it to your friends. Let them learn. Thank you. Very chill.